Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Nibble Urban Survivor. I'm your host, Nick Italian. Hope you're having a good month, good day, good year. We're going to have a good episode today. I guarantee it. Kick us in, drum people. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That was good. I don't know. That, that, the intro just gives me so much energy. Hey, guys, again, welcome to the Nimble Urban Survivor. I'm your host, Nick Catelli. We got a good one today. This comes in from someone named Jeff. Jeff says, Nick, I had something traumatic happen in my life. Well, that's not good, Jeff. He said that I was escorted and politely asked, not like escorted by the cops, but politely asked by a barista, which is a French fancy term for a person who makes coffee and doesn't get paid that much, out of a coffee shop. So Jeff was escorted out. And it says here, because he discovered that it was a hipster coffee shop, and he was sitting in someone's seat that I guess, you know, because, you know, like I guess it was like the regulars all sit on the couch because they want to like reenact an episode of, you know, the TV show Friends, like at Central Park. And I guess he refused to get up. He was pulling a Rosa Parks. He's like, I will not get up from this comfortable couch while I have my latte. Okay, I was here first. And then the barista literally came over to him and said, sir, this is their regulars. This is their spot. You can either move or you can leave. I kid you not. He wrote this. Jeff wrote this. And he left. How terrible is that? You know, I I mean, think of that. Think of like if Rosa Parks would have gotten off the bus and left. Like how different history would, would be. But she didn't. She was like, fuck you. And she stayed. And Jeff, that's what you should have done. But then you know how hipsters are. They would have changed it to make it out that you were like a serial killer responsible for 9-11. And then you probably would have got arrested. And you would have been on CNN, Fox News, whatever. So don't worry. I'm glad you brought this to my show. Because this is a near and dear thing to me. <clears throat> because if you don't know this about me, me and hipsters, we do not get along at all. We do not at all. And I've had this happen to me before. Um, I actually used to go to a coffee shop that's near my place where I live now in Los Angeles. Uh, I won't name it, obviously, because I don't want to get sued by hipsters. um, Because, you know, they always have like rich parents that are lawyers or something. And I used to go there all the time. And, And then I figured out that like, no, this is awful. Because number one, I would order a coffee. It would take forever. Because the baristas, who are also hipsters, are too busy talking about their like indie screenplays with the hipster customers. And if you ask them, like, if you say, like, oh, I'm in a hurry, could you please speed it up? They're kind of ignorant to you. Like, dude, don't interrupt the creative process, okay? Like, I'll get you your, like, coffee, but you need to wait, man. Your energy spirits are, like, all over. They use all those terms, which they have no clue what they mean, like energy spirits and all that crap. And then I found that, like, it would take forever just to get a black coffee because that's all I order. I order a black coffee or an iced coffee. It takes five seconds to pour it. For them, hipster coffee shop, it was taking like 20 minutes because of all the gossip. And then I, too, <clears throat> witnessed a um, person getting run out of the couch uh, by hipsters. So I was at this coffee shop, and they have like a black couch where, you know, I guess people can sit, and there's like a little coffee table, and I guess, you know, they can do whatever. So there is always a group of hipsters that is always there, okay? I see them. I used to see them all the time. They're always there talking, shooting the shit, whatever. I don't know what they're working on. So one day I'm at the coffee shop and I see like a a mom come in with her like four-year-old daughter, okay? Single mom, four-year-old daughter. You know, the daughter wants to go all over the place. You know, she's holding on to her kids so her kid doesn't run into like a a crowded coffee shop. She finally gets her coffee. She gets the kid a muffin, right? Because that's like the closest thing to like a, a breakfast pastry, but yet to a kid it's like having a bald cupcake. So they sit on the couch, and she's exhausted. I can see she is exhausted, right? Single mom, kid, how are you not exhausted? Like, I have a three-year-old. I can't, the only reason I work out now is just to have the energy to keep up with a three-year-old kid. So she's exhausted, sitting on the couch. This is probably like her sitting on this comfortable couch <clears throat> in the coffee shop. It's probably her like, this is my one moment all of this month, maybe this year, where I feel at peace and I feel comfortable. She sat there, I kid you not, maybe three minutes, and the hipster motherfuckers come walking in, and they kick her off the couch. And this guy, I, I, I listened to the whole thing. He comes over, he's like, uh, hey, man, me and my friends always sit here, and there's a bunch of us, so could you please move? 
And <clears throat> the mom was like flabbergasted. She was flabbergasted. You know, because it's like it's a mom with her kid. And you told them to move. That's like getting on the subway and kicking a pregnant woman out of their seat. Like, get the fuck up, pregnant woman. I got to sit down. And I believe hipsters would do that. I honestly believe that's my opinion. I believe a hipster at some point in society has done that. They have kicked a pregnant woman out of their seat on the subway so they could sit down and work on their screenplay. So I see these hipsters literally just run her off. They run her off. And she leaves. And she's trying to juggle the coffee and the pastry and the kid. And I just was like, I was so close. I was so close to saying something. Uh, but I didn't. Because obviously, you know, if you make a scene in a hipster coffee shop and call out a hipster coffee person, then you're the villain. And then it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. But yeah, that happens. They ran her off. It was terrible. Um, <clears throat> I got two more stories, too. Another story, one time I was at the grocery store uh, in the middle of summer. And I had my son with me. And he's big. He's a big kid. And I was holding him up. And in the other hand, I had a basket of groceries. And I'm waiting in line behind someone to check out. I'm tired. My arm is killing me because I, I can't let my son down. Because if I do, he's going to just take off into the store and start stealing stuff. Which normally I would be fine with. But with like security cameras all that, it's a nightmare. So there's a hipster couple behind me. Okay, it's a guy and a girl. I know the girl is a hipster. Because she's trying to talk with a British accent, but she's clearly from, like, Cleveland. And then the guy, it's 85 degrees out. He's wearing sweatpants joggers, and he's wearing, like, a, a big, puffy, Portland-style Alaskan button-down, like, sweater. He's got a man bun, big, thick glasses, big old bushy beard. I'm like, dude, you're the poster child for a hipster. If there was a store called Abercrombie and Hipster, you would be the motherfucker standing out front. OK, so <clears throat> now let's talk about the etiquette of the supermarket, because you know how it is like when you're in line. Right. Uh, and somebody opens up another lane. You tell the person in front of you, hey, you can have that new open lane because you're technically second in line. I was second in line. Does the hipster say, excuse me, sir, you and your child, because you're struggling, you know, can can now check out? No, they just butt right in front of me and go to that checkout. And they don't give a shit in the world. And I was like, that's hipsters for you, man. They kick out people at coffee shops. They just, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe they just don't like people with kids. Maybe, I didn't know this. Maybe hipsters just can't have kids or something. Maybe it's like a whole like thing or something. I, I don't know. But I just remember, I was like, really, dude? Like, I'm, I'm struggling here and I just want to check out and get home. Really? You're going to butt in front of me just like that? Because I started to move towards the line. Like, I indicate it. They're like, I'm going this way now because, you know, I need to check out. I have a kid. It's crazy. And I'm second in line. Didn't matter. Cut right in front of me. I was like, just like Stephanie on Full House. I was like, how wooed. Last story I'm going to tell you is this actually happened yesterday. Uh, I was on Clubhouse. If you didn't know I'm on Clubhouse, you can find me at Nicotelli. We also have a Nimble Urban Survivor Club on Clubhouse just called the Nimble Urban Survivor Club. And I go into a room, and someone's talking about combining, uh, putting taco meat on a pizza, on a flatbread pizza, right? It's not a big deal. Whatever, taco meat, flatbread pizza, Trader Joe's. Seems like something the Olive Garden's going to, like, create tomorrow and probably make, like, a billion dollars off of it, right? So the whole joke of the room is, should I put taco meat on a pizza? Kind of stupid, kind of lame. So I enter the room, and I say, no, you shouldn't put taco meat on there because, you know, you're combining Mexican and an Italian. And I'm joking, by the way, because I'm a comedian. And I say, you know, you could spark World War III because you're taking two countries who are very prideful with their food and trying to, like, artificially combine them. And you could start a war off that. So I'm completely joking that you could start, like, World War III from putting taco meat on pizza, which any normal, sane, intelligent person would know that, well, he's joking. I kid you not hipster in the room goes oh my god are you serious come on are you serious about that nick oh my god that's insane and i'm just like i didn't say this but i'm like are you that stupid that like you don't realize that i'm joking and then the best is because i didn't think they were hipster at first i i, I just thought they were just like a regular person who just doesn't take comedy uh, or they just don't understand it and so, but then they got in like their passive aggressive jab because, you know, I'm Italian 
and they hit me with a, oh, you know, was that was is that what happened when the Italians took pasta and stole it from the Chinese? I guess indicating that at some point in Italian history that we stole the idea of pasta, which I guess is like our national dish uh, from the Chinese. So I guess she was like trying to make like a racist, I don't even, is that a racist comment? I think that's like a food racist Italian comment. And, you know, Italians, we don't give a shit. You want to stereotypes, whatever. You want to put a character in your show that looks like Luigi, we don't care. So I was just like, whatever, lady. Um, but, yeah, then I figured out that I was in a room of hipsters because then I just started taking blows left and right, and then I got out of there. Um, but that's not good. That's not good to have these people in our society, okay? But I will say this. Hipster coffee shops, the coffee's pretty decent. It's pretty good. They make good coffee. It's usually a good chill atmosphere. You know, they've got nice music. The lighting is good. There's um, artwork on the walls that's been created by the regulars that you can buy for like $3,000. You know, it's usually like a shitty watercolor painting of the coffee shop itself. And they're like, you can buy our art. And it's only going to cost you $3,000. And I'm like, eh, that's not going to happen. So <clears throat> why do we need to survive? going to hipster coffee shops. Well, number one, they make amazing coffee. I'll give you hipsters that. You guys make really, really good coffee. You make really good pastries. Um, they're delicious. I like going there. But I just can't survive the society that's there. You know? I, I It's hard for me because I stick out like a sore thumb because I'm just this, I'm just this guy from the, the Bears from Chicago trying to go to the hipster coffee shop, you know? So it's tough, but I love the coffee. It's good. And we have to have it because obviously, guys, if you know, if we stop going to the hipster coffee shops because we can't handle the hipsters, well, then, I mean, let me tell you, I mean, we all know, like, if you don't, if I don't have my morning cup of coffee and it's not a good morning cup of coffee, I'm liable to be turned into like a serial killer. And a lot of people are like that too. And what's going to happen is that if the hipster coffee shops all close because we stop going to them, we stop getting the good coffee, we stop drinking coffee, because then once you've had good hipster coffee, it's hard to go back to like store-bought coffee, you know? <clears throat> like I can do Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts, but it's hard to go back. And then people just stop drinking coffee and then they go insane because you know how coffee is. The minute you have your first cup when you're however old, three years old for me, you can just never stop drinking coffee because the minute you do, your brain will literally just melt or explode with anger. So then what's going to happen is we will have World War III and it will just be called the Coffee Wars and it'll just be everyone just so irritated by everything because that's how it is. Like when you don't have your coffee, like you're irritated by everything that goes on around you. Like you could be irritated just by someone looking at you and you're ready to kill them because you haven't had a good old dose of coffee caffeine. So that's what we're looking at. If we can't survive the hipster coffee shops, we don't get the good coffee, boom, end of the world. And <clears throat> I don't want that to happen. That would be terrible. So how do we survive going to hipster coffee shops? First, I think we need to understand the hipster and where they originated from, which I, I technically don't know. But I did a little research and to me, I think hipsters were like, I think they originated in some rich kid's basement and he was there with his friends and they didn't have like an identity or they didn't know like what click to be in high school or they didn't fit in. So they were probably watching like an old video <clears throat> of like hippies at Woodstock, you know, and hippies like protesting Vietnam and, and all, you know, hippies like granted, you know, people make fun of them for being lazy, but they did have like a good political movement. They say, you know, Vietnam, all that. So I do respect them. You know, they did actually like take it to the man, I guess. So they're watching these things and they're probably like, guys, what if we did like, <clears throat> what if we became like hippies, but we're like rich, not like how they were poor. And we just kind of dress in rich stuff that looks poor. And then we just say that we're like artists and free spirits, but we all drive Bentleys, Range Rovers, and BMWs. And somebody was like, yeah, that sounds like something I want to get behind. And that's how the hipster was born. You know, that's how they were born. It's kind of like uh, in the movie where, you know, all of the weird kids form their own sports team to compete. Kind of the same idea. Kind of the same idea. But they had the power of money. Because hipsters, a lot of the hipsters I've met are like super, super rich. 
you know, but they try to like sell it like they're not rich, like they're a starving artist. And I've seen that before. It's like, dude, man, I'm just like a starving artist working on my poems. Hold on really quick, man. I'm I'm getting the oil changed on my Bentley. Give me one second. Let me pull out my $5,000 iPhone just so I can like confirm that my Bentley's been changed and that my butler's going to drive the car back over here to this coffee shop. Hold on. But dude, like I'm seriously, like, I'm a starving artist. Like yesterday, like I was so starving that like when I went to that five-star Michelin restaurant and they had caviar as a garnish next to the steak, like I ate the caviar garnish because like I'm totally starving, bro. And it's like tough out there, you know, man? Like my Bentley is like a year old. Like my brother got a Bentley that's like 2021. Like I'm still driving the 2020 Bentley. Like life is tough, bro. I know what it's like, you know, man? I feel like that's kind of hipster culture for me. That's my opinion. Is that a fact? I don't know. If enough people disagree with what I just said, it's pretty much a fact. So, guys, how do we survive going to the hipster coffee shop? Well, number one, don't hire someone to go get your coffee. That's the big no-no, right? Don't do that. You know, I never order coffee through, like, Grubhub or DoorDash or any of that stuff because you know how it is. Like, it's cold. Like, it gets to you. It's lukewarm. And if you're like me, I like my coffee either ice cold or scolding hot, um, where it literally just burns the whole inside of your mouth and you can't taste anything for probably 24 hours. That's how hot I like my coffee. doesn't work, okay? Also, you can't stand out in front and have a person, like, go in and get coffee for you and then come out because then that just that, that's kind of weird and then they might call the cops on you because nowadays people will call the cops on you for anything. So don't use a delivery service to get the coffee. Also, I don't think a lot of hipster coffee shops do the delivery thing, to be honest, just because delivering coffee, like it's not, you know, not a big thing, okay? So what you want to do is you kind of, I guess step one technically is you got to dress the part. Okay, and when I mean dress the part, because you know hipster outfits, they can be kind of expensive. I don't, you don't need to drop like three thousand or four thousand dollars. Just go out, get a pair of like Converse, you know, from Target. You know, Target sells Converse. They call them the one star Converse. I think they're like twenty dollars. Get a pair of Converse, scuff them up a lot, like really scuff them up. Okay, and then just get some like kind of tight jeans that are kind of, <clears throat> you know. I don't know. They're, they're, they're not skin tight, but they're definitely tight. Like you could still fit things in between the jean and your leg. And then for a shirt, you know, I wouldn't do like the flannel shirt thing or a sweater. I would just get a t-shirt on and just have it say like a bland political hipster statement. And you could just make one of those. Like you just go get like a white t-shirt, get an iron on, make that at home. That probably just costs you like maybe $10. And the political statements, you know, you could just say like, I stand up to stand up. You know, you want to say stuff like that. You're like, I'm writing the screenplay on how to fight justice. Or I wrote the capitalism in taking down capitalism. Or just something like my energy's always fought. At a Bentley times three. You know, something bland, generic. Because I feel like that's what hipsters do, is, is, is they say like these really weird, generic, bland statements that kind of make sense, right? And I knew a guy like that in Chicago. Uh, and it's really funny, because he was like a self-proclaimed like genius of comedy and hipster, and he would say all these like weird philosophizing things, which really didn't make any sense. And I feel like he was just making up stuff. He'd be like, yeah, man, well, we're talking about the like the society of things and the energy spirits of what like Garrett Syndrome was saying. Well, then can we can really analyze just how like capitalism and the stock market is more of like a phantom of menace of when we're focusing kind of on the Jedi powers of minds. Um, and I was just like, dude, you know, and your stupid person thinks that they're actually like saying something intelligent, but geniuses like myself are like, what the fuck? Was that a Star Wars reference in there? Like, what the fuck did you just say? But here's the kicker, though. I was like, where do you work? Oh, I work at Costco in the eye department. I was like, oh, okay, so you're a hipster, but yet you work at the most corporate place in America that totally supports, you know, big store buying, which I fucking love Costco, by the way, uh, just for the record. Um, so I thought that was really, really funny. I was like, oh, you're a self-proclaimed philosophizing hipster who works at Costco. Kind of an interesting thing there. A little bit of a, what we call an oxymoron of a hypocritical situation. See that? I used two smart words and they actually made sense. 
hmm. But, you know, dress the part. Wear a t-shirt like that. You can also get like a beanie cap. So really, for your hipster outfit, you're looking at like, maybe like $50. $50. That's not too bad when you really consider like, you really want the coffee. So you got to dress the part. And what we just talked about kind of takes me to step two is <clears throat> you got to talk the talk right? Because when you go into a hipster coffee shop and they say, hey man, how's your day going? They want a legitimate answer, right? Like when I go to like Starbucks, like, hey, how's your day going? You just go, oh, it's good, man. How are you doing? Oh, great. What can I get you? Boom. That's why I love Starbucks. Friendly, fast. They know the point. Like Starbucks gets it. Like they're like, dude, people want coffee. They get coffee. We don't want them to go crazy. We have to get them their coffee as soon as possible. That's Starbucks. That's why I love Starbucks. Dunkin' Donuts, same philosophy. Coffee, fast, donuts, boom, happy, customers. Hipster coffee shop, they want to shoot the shit with you the whole time they're checking you out, okay? So you have to come up with just like a backstory to have when you're talking to them. So if they're like, hey, man, how's your day going? You got to go in there and be like, oh, man, it's going really good, dude. I just wrote page three of this screenplay. Oh, yeah, dude? Like, what's your screenplay about, bro? Dude, it's this, like, indie story about a guy finding himself. Remember, it's always got to be about someone finding themselves. I find that every hipster always writes a screenplay about somebody finding themselves, and it's just three hours long of a man finding himself in an open field. And that's what you can do. I'd be like, yeah, man, he's, like, finding himself and stuff. And the hipster guy would be like, whoa, that's awesome, dude. So, like, does he ever find himself? And then you just – and see, that's the thing. is like you don't have to get detailed with them. You can just kind of keep repeating the same thing over and over again in different manners. I'll give you an example. Let's go back to our example here. Oh, man, does he find himself? Oh, dude, in my screenplay? Like, yeah, he finds himself, like, all over the hemispheres and stuff. And then when he's, like, finding himself, there's this moment where he, like, really finds himself, but then he finds it again. Whoa, dude, that's that's incredible, man. I can't wait to read it. Like, and granted, like, I know you're like, oh shit, do I have to write this? You don't have to write it. Nobody ever reads them. Dude, what can I get you? And then you have to be like, you know, and when you order your coffee, you have to always open your hipster coffee ordering statement with this. You have to be like, mm, man, what am I feeling today? I think my energy is feeling a black coffee. That you always have to say that. Like, what am I feeling today? My energy is feeling a black coffee. Boom. And then when it comes to payment, I think hipsters will take Bitcoin. I think that's only in like San Francisco and Brooklyn. I don't know much about Bitcoin. I do know that it's like a growing currency. I used to think it was a hipster currency, but now I think it's like gotten really corporate. So I don't know. I don't think Bitcoin is like a payment. I think you can just pay with credit cards or cash or whatever. So I know some people always like associate hipsters with Bitcoin. I used to do that too, but I think now like Bitcoin is, is, has taken off. So I wouldn't worry about that. And then the other thing they're going to ask you while you're paying, because they'll ask for like a little extra, you know, like, hey man, yeah, yeah, here's your change. Would you like some latte art? Because now you know what latte art is, right? Like, I used to see it all the time. Like, if you get a latte, I don't drink lattes, but, you know, they'll, like, pour the milk in there in a certain pattern, and it looks like a, you know, it looks like a flower or something like that. It's, it's kind of neat. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. When I'm drinking coffee, I don't think of, like, mm, man, I hope, you know, I hope there's some good latte art on it, or I am not going to drink this coffee. You know, I don't think like that, but some people like the latte art, especially hipsters. Yeah, they love it for some reason. I don't get that. But now I feel like they're they're definitely rich hipsters because now if you go to a coffee place, they have like a latte burning machine that can literally put any picture on your milk. So like let's say you like you get a latte, right? It's like espresso and milk and then you get like the foam on top. They can like take a picture off your phone or a logo or anything and they put it in like a little digital latte printer. And what I think it does is it like slightly burns the milk. So then you'll have this like weird brown burnt milk looking picture on the top of your latte. All right. And that's something they do. So if you order a latte at a hipster coffee shop, number one, it's going to be really, really delicious. And number two, they're going to put hipster art on it. Okay. Now here's the rookie mistake is some people just admire the latte art 
for like a second and then they drink it. They're like, fuck this, I'm gonna destroy it, I'm gonna drink it. If you're like me, that's how I am with food art, right? Like somebody like gives me like a really nice looking cookie or brownie or hot dog or whatever. I don't admire it, I just eat it. Because that's, you know, typically what a normal person would do with their food. <clears throat> now, if you're at a hipster coffee shop, you can't do that. Because then it's a clear indicator that you do not belong there. It's kind of like, remember in Inglorious Bastards when they're at that bar in the basement and they're playing that game and then the guy says that he wants to order three shots and he holds up three with like his three fingers uh, and then the German guy knows that he's lying because he didn't use his thumb when holding up three. Because I guess in Germany, when you say th you want three of something, it's like your thumb, your pointer finger, and your middle finger. And remember, the guy didn't do that in the movie. Well, this is what could happen to you with your latte art at the hipster coffee bar. You could have a total, like, inglorious bastards moment. Because the rookie mistake is don't sip the coffee if it has latte art. You need to set the cup down on a table and then get some nice lighting. And you need to have what I like to call a mini hipster photo shoot with the latte art. And they're going to be watching you too, okay? And I would say that a good amount of photos to take would be probably anywhere from like 5 to 76 photos. You know, take it of the latte art. You know, take yourself, you know, pretending to drink it. You know, take yourself uh, a selfie, like holding it up. You know, take tons and tons of selfies. Post them on Instagram. Tag the coffee shop on Instagram in your posts. That's an important thing to do, okay? So when you're at the hipster coffee shop, I, I, I'm being dead serious here, guys, and there's latte art on it. You have a mini photo shoot with that fucking latte art, or they will ask you, to leave and you don't want that to happen so now you get your coffee and your pastries and all of that stuff you've taken the photos let's move on to the next step now any normal person in a hip you know at a coffee shop you'd sit down you'd tinker on your phone drink your coffee you know <clears throat> whatever i usually just tinker on my phone i'm a phone tinker at the coffee shop i pretty much i'm playing games i'm tinkering whatever right it's the same thing i do on the toilet just now i have a coffee in my hands and i'm not seeing it on the toilet but you can't do that in a hipster coffee shop okay so when you sit down you got to have a laptop on you and remember make sure your laptop is just covered with random stickers of of um of indie bands from like portland and brooklyn and I think the Lower West Side or the Village or something in Manhattan, okay? Tons of, like, indie bands that you've never even heard of. Um, want the laptop covered with those. Open it up, and then just act like you're working on your screenplay. And that's all you have to do. You know, you can surf the internet, surf the web, tinker, but then if, like, a hipster walks over and asks you if you need more coffee or something, click it back over to your screenplay. Because if that's the one thing I've learned, is hipsters are always working on something artistic, be it beat poetry, be it a screenplay, a sitcom, a theatrical play, always some sort of artistic thing, which isn't a bad thing, you know, because, you know, hipsters, they're, they're quiet, they're working on their thing. They're focused. I like that. That's why I like hipster coffee shops. They're quiet. So <clears throat> you're going to need that. You're going to need these tools to go with your coffee. A laptop. You're working on whatever it is. I, I would say the easiest route is like poetry. And it doesn't have to rhyme, right? Just say like it comes from like a personal experience and it comes from your heart and be working on that. And you should be okay. So then you're having your coffee, pretending to work on your art. And what's going to happen at some point because the hipsters will do this sometimes is they'll come and they'll check in and see if you need like a refill or if you're enjoying your time there. Or they might even ask you like, how's your screenplay coming along? Remember, they're not really interested in what you're doing. This is like a hipster check. They want to make sure that you're not a fraud. So how do you survive this third hipster test? Because remember, the first one is when you order your coffee. The second test was the latte art, right? And now the third test is they're going to confirm what you're working on. So what you want to do is you want to deflect, right? You want to get their mind on something else. So if they come over and they're like, hey, man, can I get you a refill? Hey, how's your screenplay coming along? You just need to be like, oh, yeah, it's good. Dude, I love the artwork in here. Is it for sale? Do you guys like take artwork and sell it and then they're and then see you're deflecting 
And the hipster is going to be like, oh, yeah, man, I actually painted that myself. And it's only $10,000 if you want to buy it. It's a watercolor painting that symbolizes the corporations. Uh, I actually bought the watercolors from India, and they were $20,000. But, yeah, man, like, I'm sticking it to the corporations, brah. So you want to deflect, or say, like, the music's good. You know, um, like, sometimes hipster coffee shops will actually have somebody in there, like, playing guitar you know, like they have like live music, which is really nice, by the way. Like, I really appreciate the live music. It's very soothing. That's another way to, to uh, deflect. You could be like, oh, man, the music in here. It's so zen and fly. Like, I love this artist. And he's like, yeah, man, I really like our guitarist, too. His name is Chatsworth. He's really cool. He lives out in Malibu. Did you know that guitar is actually one of uh, uh, Elvis Presley's old guitars and his dad like bought it for him for like $100 million? But he's fighting it to the man because he's an indie musical artist. You know, he's not all like corporate and sellout. That's the big thing you have to say. It's like, dude, I love this music. I'm glad to see it. That artist is a real artist, starving artist with his million dollar Elvis guitar. And he's taking it to the man. And I think that's how you pass that test. And then the guy would be like, very cool, man. And then he'll go off and, and do the rest of his thing. And then you'll finish your coffee. Okay. And then as you're leaving, you can just say, like, have a great day. Needs to be really simple. Get out of there. And that's really, in reality, that's how you survive the hipster coffee shop. It's just You just pretend that you're a hipster. Now let's talk about something important here. Because what I've seen happen, and I've seen this happen to really, really good people, is they follow these, these snaps that I've created. And then they get in too deep. It's kind of like, remember in Donnie Brasco, when Donnie Brasco, he should have just quit the FBI and just became a made guy and the mom, like, full time. He didn't do it. But you could tell he was teetering on, you know, it's like a method actor. You know, then they start believing that they actually are that real person. And that gets dangerous. And sometimes that's how hippies recruit people. Is that you, you know, this happens. Actually, if you didn't know this, statistically, one in every 400,000 American gets turned into a hipster by pretending they're a hipster at a coffee shop. And that's how the hipster population can grow. If the hipsters, though, find out that you're poor or you're like middle class or you don't have rich parents, they won't take you. And then what happens is they throw you back into like regular society and you don't know how to then blend into regular society because you're like a broke, poor hipster. You're an outcast of society. And that's not good. So you don't want to have that happen. Also, I don't want to deal with the various lawsuits that will arise from this. So my lawyer is looking at me right now and, and he wants to let everyone know. What's that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm saying it right now that we are not responsible that if you, you know, you or a loved one, you know, go to the hipster coffee shop, pretend to be a hipster, turn into a hipster, and then it ruins your whole family because you move everybody to like Brooklyn and you try to rent like a studio apartment that costs $10,000 a month and it just destroys your whole family. So how do we avoid in the survival technique of surviving the hipster coffee shop? How do we avoid not becoming the thing that we're pretending to be? And I would say that every morning after you've had your coffee, you need to do hypnotherapy and work with a therapist and have them bring you back to earth, bring you back to reality and remind you who you are. The best way I would do it if I had to use like a suggestion of this, if you don't have money to spend on hypnotherapy or like the medical insurance is you ever see that movie 50 first dates with Adam Sandler. Remember at the end of the movie where like Drew Barrymore, if you didn't know the movies about like Drew Barrymore can, can't remember anything. And so every day she thinks she's reliving the same day. And then I guess she like marries Adam Sandler and they have a kid. And so they, at the end of the movie, they jump into the future and she wakes up in like a boat and she finds a videotape. And she puts the videotape in. And the videotape is like, it tells her like everything that's happened up until that point. And it shows her like the accident, what caused her brain damage, why she can't remember. This is her family. This is her daughter. Boom, 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 boom. And they live happily ever after. Actually, it's a really, really good Adam Sandler movie. Really good. What an amazing love story. I remember I had like one of the best endings. I'm getting a little choked up talking about it. And one of the best endings, and what I would say is like considered a rom-com 
Um, so, and that's kind of like what you have to do is you need to make like a, a, a videotape or a DVD or something that explains what your life was like before you started going to the hipster coffee shop. So you go to the hipster coffee shop, you use my steps from this episode, and then you go somewhere like, like if you're going in your car or if you go home or whatever, pull it up on your phone and watch it. And you want to remind yourself that you're not a hipster, that you're just a real human being. And hopefully that pulls you back in the reality. And you need to do that every time you go to a hipster coffee shop. Even if you walk by one and you don't go into it, or even if you just could carry out coffee, you should still do it just to be safe. So using like a hypnotherapy, make a video, you know, make it be about like yourself, what you love to do, where do you work, where do you like to shop, you know. Also do one of those things like in the video of like, hey, you know, like if I was making one of myself, it'd be like, hey, Nick, it's Nick. I know you just went to that hipster coffee shop and you might be feeling kind of hipsterish, but I'm here to remind you, you're not a hipster. You're Nick Catelli. Say that with me. You're Nick Catelli. You know, so something like that. Bring you back into reality, okay? Because if you don't do that, then eventually they'll just absorb you. And then you will turn into the thing that you hate, but love their coffee. And I don't want that to happen to you at all. At all. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little emotional, guys. Get a little Can we just... Oh, my God. I might need some hypnotherapy right now. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Oh, God. Okay. Center myself. Center myself. Three, two, one. Okay. Back in the show. Back in the show. You know, for a second there, I thought I was a hipster. Almost happened on Nimble Urban Survivor. Not going to happen, though. Brought myself back. So, guys, that's it. That's how you survive. Go into the hipster coffee shop. Now, I know what a lot of you people are going to think. You're like, oh my God, Nick made fun of hipsters. He bashed him. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever, guys. I'm just telling you how it is. And the truth hurts. I'm not insulting hipsters. They have their own culture. Whatever. They're, they're, they're peaceful. Okay? They're not lighting things on fire or destroying stuff. They're just making coffee, writing their screenplays, and then, you know, tagging latte art. Not that harmful. They're fine. They're just not the people for me. But I like their coffee. I like their pastries. They contribute that to society. That's the one thing they contribute to society is really good fucking coffee. And I appreciate that. And all this episode is is how to survive going to their coffee shops. You know, it's kind of like if you go to a foreign country... You want to know the culture, right? You want to know how to speak. You know, if you're going to Italy, you want to know how to speak a little Italian, walk a little Italian, dye your hair black, look a little Italian. Am I right? Same thing here. So I'm not bashing hipsters. I'm just saying it's like going to a foreign country. That's pretty much all I'm saying, right? Right? And there's nothing wrong with that. The only difference is you don't need a passport. So guys, thank you again for tuning in to the Nimble Urban Survivor I hope you have a good coffee today. I hope you're listening to this episode at a coffee shop. And if you are listening to it, just remember, you are you. You are not a hipster. Don't fall into it. And guys, as always, remember, if you ever want to be on the show or you have a topic that you want me to talk about, feel free to reach out to me at my website at www.catellicomedy.com. Again, guys, thank you for listening. Have a great month, great day, great year. Have a really good cup of coffee. And I will see you guys. Later.